Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 1, text 15, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Founder Acharya Aviskan. Panchajanyam Rishika Ishaha Devadattam Dhanam Jayaha Poundram Dadmo Mahashankham Bhima Karma Vrika Udaraha Panchajanyam Rishikesho Devadattam Dhananjayaha Poundram Dadmo Mahashankham Bhima Karma Vikrodaraha Panchajanyam Rishikesho Devadattam Dhananjayaha Poundram Dadmo Mahashankham Bhima Karma Vikrodaraha Panchajanyam Hrishikesho Devadattam Dhananjayaha Poundram Dadmo Mahashankham Bhima Karma Vrikodaraha Someone is translating? Only one? Two, all right. Panchajanyam the conch shell named Panchajanya. Rishika Ishaha. Rishikesha. Krishna. The Lord who directs the senses of the devotees. Devadattam. The conch shell named Devadatta. Dhanam Jayaha. Dhananjaya, Arjuna, the winner of wealth. Poundram, the conch named Poundra. Dadmo, blue. Mahashankham, the terrific conch shell. Bhima Karama, one who performs Herculean tasks. Rika Udaraha, the voracious eater, Bhima. Lord Krishna blew his conch shell named Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta. And Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pondra. Purport. Lord Krishna is referred to as Rishi Kesh in this verse because he is the owner of all senses. The living entities are part and parcel of him and therefore the senses of the living entities are also part and parcel of his senses. The impersonalist cannot account for the senses of the living entities and therefore they are always anxious to describe all living entities as senseless or impersonal. The Lord, situated in the hearts of all living entities, directs their senses. But he directs in terms of the surrender of the living entity and in the case of a pure devotee, he directly controls the senses. Here on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Lord 
directly controls the transcendental senses of, of Arjuna. And thus, his particular name of Harishi Kesha. The Lord has different names according to his different activities. For example, his name is Madhusudam because he killed the demon of the name Madhu. His name is Govinda because he gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses. His name is Vasudeva because he appeared as the son of Vasudeva. His name is Devaki Nandan because he accepted Devaki as his mother. His name is Yashoda Nandan because he awarded his childhood pastimes to Yashoda and Vrindavan. His name is Parthasarathi because he worked as charioteer of his friend Arjuna. Similarly, his name is Hrishi Kesha because he gave direction to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Arjun is referred to as Dhananjai in this verse because he helped his elder brother in fetching wealth when it was required by the king to make expenditures for different sacrifices. Similarly, Bhima is known as Vrikodara because he could eat as voraciously as he could perform Herculean tasks such as killing the demon Hidimba. So, the particular types of conch shell blown by the different personalities on the side of the Pandavas, beginning with the lords, were all very encouraging to the fighting soldiers. On the other side, there were no such credits, nor the presence of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Director, nor that of the Goddess of Fortune. So, they were predestined to lose the battle, and that was the message announced by the sounds of the conch shells. Panchajanyam Hrishi Kesho Devadattam Dhananjayaha Pondram Dhadma Mahashankham Bhima Karma Vrikodaraha <coughs> Lord Krishna blew his conch shell called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta, and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pondra. Om Gyan Timirandhasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Nilitam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Vena Maha Vande Ham Shri Guru Siyata Parakamalam Shri Guru Navaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Burjana Saitam Kashra Taitam Nadevam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamascha Shri Krishna Taitanda Bhavunityananda Shri Taitanda Radha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare Hare so from, from this verse and Srila Prabhupada's purports we can understand that in the Vedic culture names are very important Names are not simply assigned arbitrarily. Just like nowadays all over the world, maybe the craze has died off a bit in the last year or so, but there was a great craze to call girl children Diana because of the princess Diana. And you'll find if there's some popular football star, then if he's doing very well, he's scoring a lot of goals, then people, they like to name their newly born sons after the football star. Is it here also? Like that? I guess Slovenia doesn't have much of a football team probably. But it's, it's quite common in other countries. 
in uh, Madras, the chief minister of Tamil Nadu state in India. His name is Karuna Nidhi, which is the name of Krishna. His two sons are called Hitler and Stalin. <laughs> Hitler is the uh, mayor of Madras. It's quite favorable to our movement, actually. It wasn't his fault he got called Hitler. <laughs> See, he's uh, this Karuna Nidhi, although he has the name of Krishna, he's the head of an atheistic party. They have built up their reputation on being atheists. Of course, it's all politics. He, secretly, he goes he, at home. He worships deities and everything, but officially, he's an atheist. It's one way to capture the votes. You see, thanks to modern education, it's, you can capture votes in India by being atheist. What a horrible situation! Fortunately, you see, now we're discussing politics. After all, the battlefield of Kurukshetra, it's all politics. So, uh, fortunately, the the most popular party in India at the present time hasn't been quite popular enough to form a uh, government by itself so far is a party which promotes the values of traditional India such as no cow killing and promoting the history of India according to the Puranas rather than according to the Western scholars. So in Indian culture or Vedic culture it's very... The name is not just given arbitrarily. When the child is born, they have to see what is the Rasi, what the, the exact birth time, and then according to the particular time, which star is predominating at that time, then they have to give a name according to that. The, the particular syllables, can just like, so it's quite common in India, someone will come to me because I'm sannyasi, and say, please give a name for the child, but it should be, the astrologer says it should be, the first syllable should be R or B or B, something like this. They'll say like this. So it's not just, it, it, it's not just arbitrarily given. Now, traditionally in Indian culture also, names will be given, a, names of divine personalities, either God or the demigod. Most auspicious are names like Krishna, Rindavan, you'll find many people even today. Uh, in southwest, in, in uh, the area of Odupi, where the Madhva Sampradaya is very prominent, you'll find many people with names like Madhav Krishna, Krishna Govinda, many names like this. You'll find names like Kanai. In, 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 in Gujarat, very common, Kanu, Kanai, Vangshidhari. In Bengal, uh, there's so many Vanamali, Nityananda, Nitai Chandra, Nimai Chandra, all these names you'll find. And names of demigods, they're also quite common. According to the local area, in some areas they worship Ganesh more, so you'll find more Ganeshes. Young boys called Ganesh, no, young men, older men, whatever. Unfortunately, due to the atheistic influence in India now, it's become quite common to give children names, just some secular names. So they have, and they choose the most stupid names also. They think it's some kind of Western name. So it's just like one of my disciples, he has three daughters, one of them died recently, some electric shock. So the two daughters who are, I think she had a Hindu name, but the other two. One is called Beauty and the other is called Dimple. I don't, I don't know how stupid. I don't know if you can understand how stupid that sounds. <laughs> sounds really corny, like something out of a cartoon or something like that. So this is secular India. Don't give, don't give, uh, don't give names of demigods or names of God. But actually, that's very auspicious to call, to give the name of God. Even quite a common girl's name in Gujarat is Krishna, female form, Krishna, the long A at the end, Krishna. So that's very auspicious. We see from the life of Ajamya, he named his last son Narayana. So he's always saying Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. I think I told this before. I had the 
this very strong impression once I was in a village in Bangladesh and the family I was staying with, there are so many children. This is, this is before contraceptives became promoted. That's how Bangladesh has a population, I think, of 130 million now. Uh, so the, the w- woman of the house, her youngest son was called Vishnu. She was very attached to him. So whenever he went out of sight of her, she'd be calling. So all day you'd be hearing, Vishnu, 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 ow, 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 come here, Vishnu, Vishnu. Where are you, Vishnu, Vishnu, all the time calling. It was very auspicious. She's only thinking of her son, but because the tradition is there to give the name, Vishnu, Govinda, Murlida, Vangshidhari, all these names. So it's very, you're always hearing these names. And it's so much part of Indian culture. You see even the, the place names Krishna Naga, as that town near Mayapur, Krishna Naga. It's not named after Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's named after one king whose name was Krishna. But still the name Krishna gets there. He was named Krishna after Krishna. And the town is named after the king, and the king's name is Krishna. So you get the name Krishna Naga. And there are so many towns like that. Gopal Ganj, Madhavdi, Gopaldi, Narsingdi. So many towns. In Bangladesh, East Bengal, so many towns. And now they like to change the name because it's Muslim and that's there. They don't like Hindu names as they think. So Narayan Ganj, a big city in Bangladesh. Now they call Enganj. Brahman barrier, B barrier. <laughs> they, like, they like to take out, they don't want, that envy is there. Some people, still the people call Narayan Ganj. Still they call. So it's very auspicious. Even if you don't like it, you're always the same, saying Narayan Ganj, or the name of one. This, they name the streets after different eminent personalities. Just like there's in Calcutta, one of the famous streets named after one of the famous scientists, Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose. So the name is there Jagadish. It's the name of Krishna. Actually, that's being recognized now. Prabhupada said about Jagadish Chandra Bose. He was a famous Indian scientist. So actually, he discovered television. But Marconi, he was, was his friend, and he discussed with him, this is how it works, I discovered it. And Marconi went and said, hey, look, I discovered it. Now that's being recognized also. But the British, they wanted to promote that how can an Indian invent anything? It should, it should be a Westerner. We can't, Indians inventing some technology? We can't allow that. So, so envious. So that name is that if you say even uh, you know, where are you going? How to go? We have to go. You see there's Jagadish Chandra Bosch. You go down that street and like this. So the name will always be there. So, uh, names are given, and uh, in Vedic culture, people often have many names. Just like you see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was born, he was given various names. Vishvamba, Nimai, more than one name, isn't it? And then later on, he became known as Sachikuma, Shachidulal, Jagannasut. The Chand Kazi asked, that, let me call you Gorahari. So he got the name Gorahari. Then after taking sannyas, he became known as Krishna Chaitanya. And there are so many names. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So many names because he has so many pastimes, so many activities. He has some names that are given of Krishna. Krishna has so many names. All transcendental names. Yashoda Nandana, Radha Madhava, Kunja Bihari, Gopi Janavallava, Girivarad Hari, Yashoda Nandana, Rajajana Ranjana, Yamuna, Tira, Vanachari. These are all names of Krishna. Krishna has so many names. So, Krishna, that is the name, that is the name in which everything is included. If we say Krishna, all the names, all the pastimes are included. But it's nice also to recite so many other names and in this way we can remember Krishna's pastimes. In this way the Vaishnav poets and rishis, they have composed many Stotras, Krishna, Ashtotara, Shatanam, 108 names of Krishna, Gopal, Sahasranam, 1,000 names of Gopal, Vishnu, Sahasranam, 1,000 names of Vishnu, Balabhadra, Sahasranam, 1,000 names of Balaram, 
Radhika Sahasrana. For Radhika. And for the demigods also there's Lalita Sahasrana. Who is that? Lalita? That means Durga, actually. Lalita is a common name of Durga, as well as being the principal Gopi assistant of Radharani. Because Lalita, each, each name has a meaning. Lalita means charming or graceful. Male form is Lalit, Lalita. Lalita, Lalita. So Lalita is a name for Krishna also. And Lalita is a name for Durga or one of the gopis. So sometimes, just like there's one devotee I know in India, his name is Lalit Krishna Das. That means Krishna is also very charming and graceful like this. So Krishna has many, many names. And by reciting these names, we can remember his qualities his pastimes, his different associates. Therefore, there are many nice songs. We can sing Yashamati Nandana, Bhajabara Nagara, Gokula Ranjanaka, Jai Radhe, Jai Krishna, Jai Vrindavan, Sri Govinda, Gopinath, Madana Mohan, Shamakunda, Radha Kunda, Giri Govardhan. If we read the pastimes of Krishna, hear the pastimes of Krishna, then again, if we sing these songs, we can remember. That's why you'll find also at the end of each of the three parts of Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a summary of all the pastimes. Do you remember reading this? At the end of Adi Lila, Madhi Lila, Anti Lila, there's a summary. Just the different pastimes are noted in brief, so you can remember again. Oh, there's this Lila, that Lila, this Lila, like this. So Krishna, many, many names. And all the names are auspicious. Some names are considered principal names. These are the names that the uh, residents of Vrindavan, they particularly like to call Krishna by. Krishna, that is the principal of all principal names. There are names also just like Madhava, Hari, Govinda, Gopal, Mukunda, Keshava. These are primary names of Krishna. And then also other names, just like this Kunja Vihari, Yashoda Nandana. These are very important names of Krishna. They, they relate to Krishna in his original form, Govinda in Vrindavan. Of course, there also Vishnu, there's also a Vishnu expansion called Govinda. Because Govinda means he who gives pleasure to the land and the senses and the cows. That particularly refers to Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. But there's also a form of Vishnu because he also called Govinda, because he also gives pleasure to the land and the cows and the senses. Hari is a name of Krishna in Vrindavan, but that's also a common name of Lord Vishnu, Hari. There are, there are names which particularly refer to the Vishnu forms, like Vishnu, Narayana, Paramatma, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Bhutatma. These are names of Vishnu forms. And then there are, there are specific Leela forms such as Rama, Nrsingha, Varaha, Kurma, Parashuram, Vamandev. So all these names, they're all auspicious. And when we hear these names, we can remember all the pastimes of Krishna. Now, you see devotees, they get some name. Krishna Das, Rama Das, Yashodanandan Das, Radhika Devi Dasi. Once Prabhupada explained that all the names actually the the import what's the important part is the name Das. That's the important. All the names mean Krishna Das. All the names mean that. Servant of Krishna. Or if you have a name like uh, you may have a name just like Prabhupada gave often names he gave his disciples. Names of for instance, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates. So you'll get devotees. Swarup Damodar Das. So Swarup Damodar is a famous associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that means servant of Krishna's devotees. That's even better. If we say Vaishnav Das, that's even more our constitutional position than being Krishna Das. Because Krishna is always with his devotees. 
And Krishna likes when we serve his devotees even more than if we like to serve him. Both are required. But Krishna likes to see when we are serving his devotees. So all these names, they're meant to establish our constitutional position that we are servants of Krishna or servants of his devotees. Of course, especially the disciples of Krishna Shaita Prabhu, they'll be having names like Simantadvip Das, that's in Zagreb, Simantadvip. Then someone was telling me there's one Mataji, Ananta Sarova Dasi here. I was asking, what's the name? She was saying so many shlokas. So I could immediately understand whose disciple that is. <laughs> wasn't difficult to guess. So these are also uh, pastime places connected with Krishna and non different from Krishna. Prabhupada also used to give names like that. Navadip Das. Disciple of Prabhupada, Godrum, Nadia, and also one Mataji, he gave the name Varanasi Dasi. She was married to Navadip Das. That's quite common also in India, you'll find people, it's quite common people, especially Vrindavan Das or Gokul Das, Dwarka Das, Mathura Das. You'll find it, or maybe not Das, but the name is given Mathura, Gokul. Vrindavan, or some combination, just like Mathura Chandra, Vrindavan Nath, like that. These names are quite common in India, even today. Usually not with Das, though. No, they don't put Das, just the name will be something like Gopal Chandra Bonik. Bonik being family name. So often people, they say, you say, they uh, we are worshiping Krishna and say, well, I'm also Krishna. My name's also Krishna. My name's Madhava. No, you're not Krishna. So it's, uh, if they become initiated devotees, often Bhaktisthan Sasura Thakur, he had the policy often, their name may be something like Narasingha. So you call them Narasingha Das. You're not Narasingha, you're Narasingha. Now you are recognized Narasingha Das. Just like Prabhupada's fan. His name was Abhai Charan, Dei. So, Srila Bhakti Sansasar Thakur changed his name to Abhai Charanaravinda Das. Abhai Charan, Charanaravinda means the same thing. Charan means feet. Especially when you say Charan, that means something respectable. So, Charanaravinda means lotus feet. Aravinda means lotus. So, fearless at the lotus feet of Krishna. That is the name. Often in Bengal, you'll find, because in Bengal, Das is a, is a name from Shudra caste. Das means servant. So the, the, those who are servants in the caste system, they're called Das in Bengal. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people are from higher caste and their parents become upset. How your name became Das? So they become Krishna Das. That's higher than any caste consideration. Whereas in Orissa, Das, that's Brahmin name. Because Das means a servant of the deity. In uh, Gujarat, you see, now we have quite a lot of devotees called Go this or Go that, Gornitai, Gorindu. Different names like that. So, mostly in Gujarat, they don't know this means Goranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But when they hear Gaur, they think, oh, that's Brahmin name. Something high class or respectable. One thing we often see, devotees, I don't know here what it's like, but... Sometimes, even after being initiated, everyone still uses the Karmi name. Do you have that here? No. Hmm? At home, At home yeah. The parents, they can't get used to a different name. Otherwise, when you get such a nice... Otherwise, you may be having some... I can't remember all your Slovenian names, even my aspiring disciple. I can remember Miha, that's short. But otherwise, other names, 
What was your name? I can never pronounce Rivoye or something like that. Very difficult. But once they're initiated, I can remember. It's very easy to remember. I'm used to the Sanskrit names. So uh, these names, just like I say, these names are given arbitrarily. What shall we call? Usually, what happens? The father wants to call one name, and the mother wants to give another name. So they get two names. Or sometimes the grandparents want to, say, or they name after the grandparents. In America, that's quite common. You'll find John Howard Scott the Fifth, or something. It means generation after generation, they call the same name. The names have no meaning. Actually, originally, these names all had meaning. All these names, they, all the names, they were named after some saint. Or that's why in Ireland you'll find it's very common. You'll find so many people called Patrick because Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. That's why Irish people they're often called Paddies because Paddy is the, it's the nickname for Patrick. But all these names, they originally had some meaning, even in the West. Their meaning according to some quality, usually some quality, some good quality connected with God. But that's forgotten now. And now it's just a name. As the great poet Shakespeare said, a rose would smell as sweet by any other name. You can call it anything you like. But uh, names of Krishna, they're different because they're eternal names, they're meaningful names. Every name has meaning. You can analyze the name Krishna in so many ways. Madhvacharya, he once proposed to give 1,000 meanings to every name in the Vishnu Sahasranam. That means 1,000 times 1,000. And some other scholars, they said they didn't believe. Ah, come on, you're just boasting. So then he explained one or two and they said, okay, we believe you. We can't understand your explanations are so complex, but we accept you can do it. So like that, all these names have so many different meanings. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Vallabhacharya came and he wanted to, he said, I got some new ideas for the meaning of the name Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He didn't want to see his puffed up scholarship. He said, I only know two meanings of the name of Krishna. One is Shama Sundra, the other is Yashodananda. That's all. I, we don't accept so many. We're not interested in so much scholarship. Just like the gopis, they weren't interested. They weren't sitting down making scholarly analysis. What does the name of Krishna mean? What does the name Krishna mean? Krishna mean? Krishna. Is our Krishna, that's all. But if you examine all the names, there's so much import. So just by discussing the names, you can see there are so many names that in uh, one of our god brothers made some book about different names, Krishna's names in the Bhagavad Gita. So many names of Krishna are given in Bhagavad Gita. Who can think of some of Krishna's names? One name is Krishna. Chanchalang Himana, Krishna. Arjuna says to Krishna, the name Krishna comes up several times. He complains to Krishna that the mind is very disturbed, Krishna. What other names of Krishna are there? There's one right in this verse. If you look at the board, you can see it. What's that name? Vishikesha. What is the meaning? Master of the senses. Some other names of Krishna? Madhusudana. Madhusudana means? One who killed the demon Madhu. Some other names? It's not in Bhagavad Gita. It is the name of Krishna. It doesn't. Hmm? Janadan? Yes, name of Janadan. What does that mean? There's several meanings. The one who is the maintainer of the people is the translation Prabhupada gives that. Some others? Hmm? Does that come up in Gita? Does where? Yeah, where does it come? Which verse? Second chapter. Mm -hmm. Some other names? Who said that? Did I hear? 
Someone said Keshava? Did I hear or what? <laughs> that name also comes. Yogeshwara. There are many names of Krishna. Uh, actually, there are many names if you see, yeah, if you take that. Uh, Krishna himself describing himself. So he also describes himself as the uh, aham kratu, aham yagya. I am these. I am the sacrifice. I am the ritual. So these are also names of Krishna. There are so many names of Krishna come in Bhagavad Gita. In in Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many, many, many names. I saw one book recently. I didn't stop to look. It's just, just written in Sanskrit only. Names of Krishna from Srimad Bhagavatam. Not a very big book, but if you, maybe about... Not very big book means the whole Vishnu Sahasranam. You can, in Sanskrit, you can put it in maybe five or six, maybe like this, this many pages. You can put a thousand names in Sanskrit. If you just put the Sanskrit script without any... So like it's a small book like this, thin booklet. And it's maybe a... I don't know, maybe a thousand names of Krishna from Srimad Bhagavatam. Some of them are very long. Some of the names become just like Yamuna Tiravanachari. That's a name. It's quite a long name. I never heard of any Yamuna Tiravanachari Dasi. I don't know. Well, it's possible. I heard that Prabhupada gave, I, I heard he gave some Radha Madhava, Kunja Bihari, Gopi Janavallava, Giri Varitai. I know devotees, Prabhupada disciples, all of these names. Yashoda Nandana, Brajajana Randana, I never heard any Brajajana Randana, but all the others I know devotees with those names. And Yamuna Tiravana Charidas, I didn't hear that. Maybe somewhere. So there are so many names, and practically uh, you, you can think of hundreds and uh, thousands of names. It's practically unlimited. Unlimited. Thousand names of Vishnu. He has unlimited names. Even if you take all the devotees, you could say, just like uh, they've been composed names of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Advaita Prananath, who is the life of Advaita Prabhu. So then, then you can have Advaita Priya, who is very dear to Advaita, uh, Advaita Saka, who is the friend and like From one devotee, so many names can be made, and you have so many devotees. So like this, there can be so many names. So it's a great pleasure to. Think of the names of Krishna. You can try to understand some of the names. If you study the purports, the, the word for word, translate, you can pick up different meanings in Sanskrit and then you can begin to understand these names. It's very nice. It's a nice pastime for the devotees to meditate on the names of Krishna. Of course, even without studying Sanskrit or so many names, we can do that by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everything is there. But as a pleasure for the devotees, you can study Shastra. There are so many wonderful things, so many names of Krishna, so many names of Radhika, names of Balaram. Names of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's a pleasure for the devotees. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? How does the spiritual master give the disciple his name? You mean how does he choose them? Well, it may be different in different cases of spiritual masters. <laughs> Prabhupada, I know that um, most of the names are in the beginning Prabhupada personally gave, but then later on mostly his secretary Pradyumna chose many of the names. I know my name was chosen by Pradyumna. I don't know where he got them from. My Brahmachari name, I still never saw it anywhere. I, it's, it's clear what it means, but I never saw it in any text written down. So he had Pradyumna choose them. That's how Prabhupada did many of the names. Others, I don't know. Uh, I, just like I was saying, if you hear someone is called Anandar Sarova Dasi, you can easily understand whose disciple that is. Um, 
just now I was in in Zagreb. Someone told me, oh, this devotee's name is Lokanath, Lokananda Gorodas, and also it's not very difficult to understand whose disciple that is. How many guesses do you need? Lokananda Gorodas. Must be Chaitanya Chakramarti's disciple. You can immediately understand. It's not very difficult to understand. So some have, just like Chaitanya Chakramarti gives many names of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also which you may say may be some kind of made up name, like Lokananda Gorodas. Made up in the sense that maybe you didn't hear any a devotee having such a name. But it's a, it's a bona fide name because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Ananda, he is the pleasure of the devotees of all the world. Of course, you have to be a little careful making up names if you don't really know what they mean. Uh, if you, you don't know Sanskrit much, just... Uh, <clears throat> yes, there are some devotees whose names are maybe a little unusual. <laughs> Another thing is that uh, sometimes devotees, they misunderstand their name. And that for year, for their whole life, they go... Their name is pronounced completely wrongly. Just like one of my godbrothers, uh, his name actually is Kalia Foni. Foni means snake. So Kalia Snake, who was inimical to Krishna, but later on became passive. He was very lucky, got Krishna's foot on his many head, many heads and many footprints of Krishna on his head. So he's recognized actually in Bhagavatam as a devotee, after he became converted by Krishna's mercy. So Kaliya funny, but because we have our own way of... His name is... Everyone calls him Kaliya Pani. So I like that. There are many such cases. And of course we have our Narada Munis and our Devakis instead of Narad Muni and Devaki. There are many such things we should... I, I remember also as one, dis, one devotee... Uh, in London, she was always concerned that, you know, I'm not sure my name is very nice because they're calling her Krishna Vaisha. So Vaisha means prostitute. So if you're a prostitute of Krishna, that's also very nice. But <laughs> but uh, actually her name was Krishna Vaisha, which is a name for Radharani, which means she's absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. It's a very nice name. But I know for several years she was thinking of. <laughs> so it's important to, to understand, make sure you get your name properly, understand what it means and how it's pronounced also. Any other questions? Vasudev means Krishna. Surrender to Krishna. Not that, uh, well, I surrendered to Vasudev in Mathura, and when I go to when I go to Vrindavan, no, oh, it's the same person. Not two people. Advaita Machuta Manadya Mananta Rupa Madhyang Purana Purushang Navayo Vanang Cha. Advaitam means he's not two, he's one. Although he has many forms. Advaitam Achutim Ananta Rupam. He has many forms, but he is one. Hmm. How should we address other devotees before, um, for, for example, spiritual master? Should we say suddenly, Prabhu? Even the spiritual master may address his disciple as Prabhu. 
่ไม่รู้ He doesn't think himself probably or shouldn't do. If he does, he's got a problem. But uh, common, polite, etiquette that we say, Prabhu, and that also cultivate the mood that I'm the servant. And Mataji, this is one of these controversies now. It's become a new fashion to call all the Matajis Prabhu, which is a male term. It's like saying, it's like saying Mr. Radharani, or something like that. Actually, the, of course, there is a female form, Prabhvi, but the, the standard etiquette is Matrivat Paradareshu. One should see all, except Paradareshu means others' wives. So in Vedic culture that means all other women except your own wife because all women are supposed to be married. So you should see all as mothers. So that's a very respect, respectful term, Mataji. It means giving respect. Now some of the Matajis may be protesting. They don't like to be called Mataji because in their ignorance some of the Prabhus may have been saying, Oh, Mataji, yeah. Something like this, but actually it's a very respect, respectful term. Hare Krishna. Any other question? Well, if you see your heart is dark, that means there's some progress. At least you're seeing it's dark. If you didn't, see, if it was already dark before, but maybe you didn't see it. So if you see it, at least you can start to clean it up. The question is, can I still be happy with a with a dark heart? Well, uh, yeah, well, we should be distressed at our fallen condition, but we should be happy that we are so fortunate to have come to the sh- shelter of Krishna's lotus feet in this moment, and we have the opportunity to become purified. It's no use getting depressed. We should be actually Krishna consciousness means blissful life. So we shouldn't be depressed, but we should be happy that even though. We should think like this, even though I'm such a, a fall, I'm such a fallen, wretched rascal, I'm so happy that somehow or other Krishna is accepting me and allowing me to engage in his service. And actually Krishna consciousness is very blissful. Even, even though we may be very fallen, if we chant Hare Krishna and serve Krishna, then naturally because Krishna is blissful, we also become blissful. But if we think about sense gratification, then we become black. Isn't it? Then our heart becomes black. So you can see if a devotee is very bright and blissful, you can see he's thinking how to serve Krishna. And if he's looking morose, it means he's thinking of sense gratification. Faces the index of the mind. Any other questions? So, Hare Krishna. Shri Krishna Bhagavan Ki Jai Bhagavad Gita as it is Ki Jai His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai